You want to support Roller March Unfiltered? Be sure to join our Bring the Funk fan club. Every dollar that you give to us supports our daily digital show. There's only one daily digital show out here that keeps it black and keep it real as Roller Martin Unfiltered. Support the Roller Martin Unfiltered daily digital show by going to rollermartinunfiltered.com. You can make this possible. A grand juror who heard evidence in the Breonna Taylor probe said yesterday that the grand jury didn't agree that a fatal shooting was justified. Now, this came after a Kentucky judge ordered records in the proceedings released to show if public elected officials are being honest. In a statement, grand juror number one, as a person has been identified, said that the only charge presented during the proceedings by Kentucky Attorney General Daniel Cameron was wanton endangerment. Former Louisville police officer, Detective Brett Hankinson, was indicted last month on that charge for firing shots into the apartment of Taylor's neighbors. Now, again, Daniel Cameron came out and he said that uh, any number of things and gave the impression that this is what the grand jury decided. But that is not what this grand jury is now revealing. Let's go to my panel. A. Scott Bolden, former chair of the National Bar Association Political Action Committee. Robert Patillo, executive director of the Rainbow Push Coalition Peach Tree Street Project. And Kelly Bethea, communication strategist. Scott, uh, I will start with you. To hear this grand juror come out with this statement here, basically what it shows is Daniel Cameron is a damn liar and he tried to pull the wool over the face of everyone and not wanting us to know what really happened in that grand jury proceeding? Well, uh, yes and uh, no. As soon as we knew, found out it was not an investigative grand jury, then you knew whatever the prosecutor puts in before the grand jury, they're going to vote on. He didn't put in everything. He didn't put in all the witnesses. He came, He put in what he thought he could prove. And so essentially, this investigation, this commission, this uh, this the specialty, if you will, simply wasn't special at all. It was like any other prosecutor putting in uh, a grand jury what they believe that they can prove. And so that's not justice for Breonna Taylor. That's not reality, if you will. Uh, he chose witnesses who said the police announced themselves. There are 10 others that said that they didn't. That's a huge fact and a huge difference. He didn't put those 10 witnesses in. And so um, this just simply confirms what we suspected or what we knew already. There needs to be a new prosecution or a new special prosecutor and to a new grand jury because what they didn't present, including murder charges or even manslaughter charges, that, that needs to be presented. And let the grand jury figure it out. Look, bottom line here, uh, Robert, uh, again, Daniel Cameron tried to think all of us were boo-boo the fool. He comes out with this news conference. He makes this announcement. He, all this grandstanding when the reality is he operated more as the defense attorney for these cops. Well, you know, normally grand jury proceedings are secret. Normally they're not recorded. Normally uh, you, this information never comes out. And so the question is, how many other times has this happened? under his watch and under other prosecutors' watch. That's why we, ha we have a need for federal legislation, a federal over um, intervention in local prosecutions. This is why during the Obama administration, there were so many uh, consent decrees entered into between the federal government and local uh, law enforcement. Be because part of the issue that we run into is simply put that local biases and the uh, predilections of the prosecutor determine what justice is in this country. There is no hard and uh, hard set fact pattern which can uh, ensure that we will get justice if one of us is killed or murdered. Uh, and it's completely upon and incumbent upon either the local district attorney or the state's attorney, uh, depending on your jurisdiction, or the attorney general in the state to bring justice. And in this case, because we do not have an operational civil rights division of the Justice Department, there is no hope for federal intervention either. What Mr. Cameron did was pick and choose the charges that he will present. And instead of allowing right. the uh, a jury of the of our peers to decide whether or not these officers were guilty of murder, he made the unilateral decision that he wouldn't even, wasn't even going to bring up the subject. So, of course, a pr special prosecutor should be appointed. Of course, the case should be reopened and we should look at it again. And uh, also, these indictments do not have to come from a grand jury. They can come from a preliminary, preliminary preliminary hearing in front of a judge where the information is produced, the prosecution announces in open court what the, char uh, what the charges are, what the evidence is, and a judge can decide in open court in front of the entire community whether or not charges will go forward. So 
So there are various methods within the law by which we can address these issues, but I think what we all can realize from this is that a miscarriage of justice has happened and something has to be done to remedy it. This, the Kelly, this though, is the problem that people have with district attorneys. And the issue here is not, oh, if we get a black DA, things will change. This is a black attorney general, but he's also a right-wing Republican. And so this is what people mean by having progressive district attorneys, progressive mm -hmm. attorney generals, and the word progressive has never been used with Republicans. Well, the saying goes, all skin folk and kin folk. And that rings true, especially in this case. I mean, we saw with our own eyes exactly what D Daniel Cameron think of, of his job, thought of this case, and really thinks of uh, black people in general by being um, so callous and frankly reckless with his power as prosecutor to have a grand jury hearing. Um, like my colleague on this panel have said previously, a grand jury is supposed to be a positive tool for the prosecutor to basically lay out all the facts that they have um, and, and make their case um, without any interruption or, or uh, opposition in, in, the, in the room. Um, Daniel Cameron used that um, to his advantage, but not in the best way in the interest of the victim, who is Breonna Taylor in this case. Um, I agree with Robert when um, he said, talk, when he talked about the preliminary hearing method, I personally thought that would have been a better method in this case, considering how public it was, considering the mm -hmm. outrage uh, that the community and the country at large really had towards this case, and rightfully so. Um, I find that Daniel Cameron's usage of the grand jury proceedings was actually insidious by way of what we saw uh, the outcome to be, being that he now we know that he didn't even present all the evidence there was. He really did do the job of a defendant, of a defender, a public defender, or just outside of his office. Um, he was not working in the best interest of the victim, which to me says that he was not doing his job at all. So, all right, Scott, so what next? I mean, um, well, first of all, hold but, on, hold on. But, no, wait, 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 wait. So here's the question. <laughs> um, can there be another grand jury who actually impanels that grand jury? This was the attorney general acting as a special prosecutor. Or do we have to simply accept what this grand jury went with and just say, oh, well, wanting endangerment, let's see what happens? Um, there certainly can be another grand jury. There certainly can be another special prosecutor. But but my my concern about the case oh, oh, has... wait, 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 wait. But you didn't fully answer the question. If it can be, who actually makes that decision? Um, it would be the attorney general. It would be the local prosecutor or the governor so, in so the state just, of Kentucky. So you're saying that, so because a grand jury was in panel here that was led by the Kentucky attorney general as, as, as special prosecutor, you're saying yeah. that the district attorney could say... I'm going to impanel a second yeah. grand jury, and I will present the evidence to the grand jury. Yeah, or the governor could appoint another okay. special prosecutor. It's all about political will. But you see, what, what happens in, with the prosecutor, whether it's the AG or the district attorney, is on one hand, they're going to argue, this is the counterargument. If I do an investigatory grand jury and they want to bring three counts of murder against the police officers and the facts as I know them as a prosecutor and with my discretion, if I can't make that out, why am I presenting that and going to go to trial and know I'm going to lose under the law, whether it's a jury or a judge dismisses the charges? What do I do about that? I'm not making a case for the, the uh, black attorney general in Kentucky. What I'm saying is that's the tension and the struggle that we've got to manage through as lawyers and judges. If you give it to the grand jury or you do a preliminary hearing, you still get all the evidence out. Let the judge decide or let another grand jury decide. But at least it's all in there. What bugs you most about this case is that all the facts haven't been presented and all of the uh, decisions haven't been made on all the facts. That's what needs to happen here. Robert. 
Well, well, look, prosecutors bring bullshit cases to trial all the time. I'm about 90% mm -hmm. of the criminal justice system they, is based on that. They don't want that. to, though. There, they don't there, like are plen there are plenty of black men in jail right now on BS charges from a BS grand jury and a BS prosecutor where they were able to co convince the jury based on some factor that they are guilty. So this idea that somehow they would not present a case because they didn't think they could win, that's most of what prosecutors do, as a defense attorney, I will say, present cases they know that either they should have pled or, the, or that they could not have won. He had no political will to do so. His interest was in protecting those officers, and so, that is why he presented the case as necessary. So, because, uh, because what we see from the grand jury is, this grand jury who's come forward is, he didn't even give the grand jury the opportunity to consider the questions of yeah. murder, to consider manslaughter, to consider wanton homicide, to consider yeah, criminal right. neglect of duty and those sorts of things. So I, I, I think what has to happen, and we saw this in the Ahmaud Arbery case here in Georgia, where you had the first prosecutor punt, you had a second prosecutor punt, you had a third prosecutor ready to punt, and then the state AG came in for charges. So there so, are always more bites of the apple and we have to take them. So, Robert, if you if he put all, everything in and it was an investigatory grand jury or the preliminary hearing, he gets all the facts in and the judge dismisses it or the grand jury dismisses it. What's your argument then? Are you at peace as a lawyer that everything's been done or is there still no justice for Breonna Taylor? Well, you have a full public airing of the facts. People know, instead of having these secret hearings, these that. secret chambers, where we don't know what evidence was pro uh, produced, yeah. we're counting on leaks from grand jurors and unprecedented court hearings to find out the entire basis of our criminal justice system is getting out of that concept of a star chamber, getting out of those medieval inquisitionary tactics exactly. where we have no idea what justice actually is. If Lady Liberty, if the scales of justice are going to be blind, then there has to be a public accounting of what happened, testimony, evidence, and then we can accept that decision. But what we can accept is you never even tried to prosecute these people because politically you want to be the next Supreme Court justice for Donald Trump or you want to take Mitch McConnell's seat so you'll let these yeah. officers go and let uh, Brianna Taylor die in vain. That is not how our system is built. That that yeah. uh, that, that that, that Kelly. I agree. The, what Daniel Cameron did was a path of least resistance. Yeah. No, he absolutely did that, and I agree with Robert here. Um, and I'm a lawyer as well. I just do not lawyer. Um, but smart lady. Smart lady. Good I'm idea. Sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. Uh, hold up. I'm a lawyer, but I don't lawyer. I work in policy. I'm not in court. Oh, okay. I, I'm trying to figure out what the hell that meant. <laughs> no, then leave her they alone. The joke. There you go. The joke. Uh, you started is a very broad degree. She said, I'm a lawyer. I don't lawyer. I just want to know what the hell that means. We knew what, she, it's, we knew what it's, the it's meant. A, well, hey, hey, Scott, it's Scott, it ain't your show. So it don't matter what you think. <laughs> Here we go. I want to clarify that for the audience. Kelly, go. <laughs> well, it's clarified now, right? Um, but no, I wanted to echo Robert's sentiment here, specifically when it comes to grand jury proceedings, as the saying goes, you can indict a ham sandwich at a grand jury proceeding. And that means that the prosecutor is literally at liberty to give everything, the kitchen sink, the whole infrastructure of the house to the grand jury. And they are able to come up with the case and build the case in front of the grand jury. And the grand jury is more or less is supposed to follow. So that's why this is so infuriating to myself mm -hmm. and uh, plenty of other people, especially in the legal community, because we know how easy it is to get an indictment in front of a grand jury. All the prosecutor has to does has to do is to present the evidence, all of it, and the charges, all of them, and nine times out of ten they're going to get it. So what is so frustrating here is the fact that, like Robert said, he didn't even try. That wasn't even presented. They didn't even, he didn't give the kitchen sink. He barely gave a fork <laughs> to this grand jury in terms of what this case is about. So that's what the frustrating right. thing is here. And that's why we are calling for either a new grand jury or right. a preliminary hearing and specifically a special prosecutor who is not Daniel Cameron. All right, folks, back to our Mark Unfiltered video in just one moment.
Black-owned businesses here on Rolling Money Unfiltered. We certainly want to thank Put People in Seat.com for being one of our partners. Uh, it is a black-owned company founded by Mary Spio. Uh, and uh, they have two great products. You see this virtual reality headset here. That's what it looks like right here, where you're able to place your cell phone right in here to watch their virtual reality content, 360-degree uh, video, uh, amazing clarity. You can actually get this as well. Plus, they're a 360-degree 4D headphones. These, of course, great for gaming. Uh, has a headset that comes with it as well. You can also Bluetooth. Uh, so music and videos, gaming, all of that. And so you can get these at Seek.com. You can also, of course, uh, subscribe to their content, C-E-E-K.com.com. Use the promo code uh, RMVIP2020 right here. The promo code RMVIP2020 to get one of both of these items from Seek.com.